Dear ladies and gentlemen, a happy and healthy 2021 to all of you. Welcome again to Camp Connection that provides you with regulatory news in between CampCon conferences. In this Camp Connection, we focus on regulatory developments in North America, Latin America and Asia Pacific. Nothing on Europe this time? No, but we expect an interesting interview on UK REIT soon. In the UK, they are currently battling challenging COVID times. But we all look forward to meeting live in London end of October for CampCon Europe, our 25th anniversary. Also this year, there is a lot going on with chemical control legislation around the globe. I asked Mark Hurwig how industry could rethink and adjust their chemical regulatory management approach. He indicated that it's increasingly difficult to handle business processes on a substance-by-substance -substance base and coined the whack-a-mole effect named after a game like this where moles keep popping up and you need to whack them on the head. Regulations like moles keep on demanding our attention. Mark provides some interesting thoughts on how to handle this. There has to be a better way of managing this and one of the, as I mentioned, one of the, the ways that um, uh, is being considered a lot these days is grouping. You know, the some of the governments have been doing the grouping uh, work. Um, there is, in certain places, uh, a lot to be said for doing that. Um, it, it allows you to look at, at your dependencies and your materials information management and your compliance obligations through a slightly different lens. And it also allows you to be more effective and efficient uh, internally when you're working with your engineering groups or material science or materials intelligence groups. So. Grouping in that case, by way of example, could be things like halogenated flame retardants, whether it's chlorinated, brominated, etc. Plasticizers, phthalates, there are other plasticizers besides phthalates, um, heavy metals, polymers, biocides, nanoscale materials. If uh, There are opportunities um, that are being exercised now to think of materials um, compliance requirements a little differently than has been the case historically. And uh, it's not to say that this makes this all easy, but there's the potential that it can make it easier to fulfill uh, the needs of your company or your business. Mark also reflected on regulatory developments in North America last year with, among others, the key Tosca developments in 2020 as well as the Canadian CMP plan. I asked him to describe some key regulatory activities in Canada and the US for 2021 that industry should be aware of. Another topic that is notable for 2021 uh, in the US is that related to HFC uh, compounds through legislation that um, was signed off at the very last minute um, at the end of the Trump administration in the US. It was uh, signed off and essentially enacted on December 27th, which requires now the US EPA to uh, publish final regulation on the phase down of a set of, uh, initial set of HFCs that were uh, tabulated in the legislation. And the agency has to publish these final regulations by September 22nd of this year, of 2021. So that means that they will um, have to develop the rulemaking and, and cast it as a proposed rulemaking for notice and public comment. Much more from Mark on North America can be viewed in the longer video on our YouTube channel. Let's move south to Latin America, where Pablo Olivares from SQM was so kind to provide a forecast of regulatory developments in Latin America in 2021. Over the last years, we've heard the intentions of Mexico uh, Brazil, Argentina, and Chile on moving forward with their um, chemicals management programs. But I think at this point, Colombia is winning the bold position on this. So let's start with them. Um, recently, the Colombian government had just published a new version of their chemicals degree, establishing a chemical inventory. So under this chemical inventory, um, all chemical substances um, imported or manufactured over 100 kilograms per year will need to be um, notified to this inventory um, and the information that uh, manufacturers and importers will need to notify is basically the identification of the substance, the annual um, quantity imported or, um, or manufactured of, of the substance, 
the hazard classification and also the identified uses. Uh, with this uh, information, um, the Colombian government will also prioritize um, substances that will be subject to a further um, registry. More on Latin America and the full version of my chat with Pablo. Good to see how chemical control legislation is emerging in Latin America. Another very interesting area for chemical control legislation developments is of course Asia-Pacific. Jeff Lee from Procter & Gamble sketches the big developments in this area, including of course Korea, with the first registration deadline for K-REACH already in December 2021. Jeff identifies some challenges for industry. The first one is regarding the data requirement. It is not identical as EU. There are similar data waiving read across QSA acceptance in Korea as in EU. But uh, as I said, the real implementation could differ. For example, uh, there's not a detailed guidance for using read across. So a satisfactory read across justification is critical for meeting the data requirement in Korea. Also, it's not allowed for QSA for higher than 10 ton registration as stated in regulation, which limited a lot of uh, data usage. Government will manually check for compliance for the dossier submission within 30 days. So it's not automatic that you'll be receiving registration code after one month. It's different versus the EU reach and uh, Early submission is recommended. We should not expect a similar situation as in EU, that industry submitted registration at the last minute. Another one is regarding polymer joint registration. This is the first practice in the world without any precedence experience. How to define the sameness and how to organize the data for joint polymer registration this would be a very challenging case for Korea. Due to numerous industry advocacy, authorities considering the potential postponing of polymer registration deadline. Besides the interesting developments in Korea, Jeff also talks about China, Australia and India. So it's highly recommended to watch the longer videos of this January 2021 Chem Connection. Thank you for watching, good luck whacking the balls and above all, stay healthy.